he really is stupid. Emily shook her head. These machines are not in the factory. Even if we have cameras along the road, it is still not safe. Who knows who is working together with Liam at Cooper's? The enemy isn't afraid to do something like threaten our lives. We have to make sure everything goes smoothly. Then what do you think we should do? Adam asked Emily for her opinion. Emily touched her chin with one hand and looked at the machine calmly. Damon was secretly surprised. He did not interact much with Emily, and his impression of her was that she was a murderer and didn't have a great reputation. She also had a ridiculously beautiful face. He had wondered what kind of charm she could have that could capture the hearts of Eric and John. At this moment, he vaguely understood. Emily could face such a thing calmly, even if her mind was still spinning rapidly. This was not something that an ordinary person could do. Just as he was thinking, he suddenly saw Emily walking towards him with a smile. Immediately after, she whispered something in his ear. Damon looked at Emily in shock. There was a smile on her face, and she was full of confidence. He nodded quickly and thought to himself that this woman was indeed not simple. He knew that Eric's feelings about her could not be wrong. That night, Liam slept very well. The machines in the factory had been destroyed. Even if the workers wanted to rebel, they would not be able to find any evidence. Besides, as long as those people admitted that they were tired, he just had to wait for them to bear the consequences. They were a bunch of idiots. Liam slept peacefully along with his sweet dreams. At the time, Emily carefully opened the door to her house and quickly returned to her bedroom in the dark. The next moment, her phone rang. Emily took it out and looked at it. She did not hesitate at all. The corner of her mouth was slightly raised as she picked it up. Are you hurt? Eric's low voice sounded in the quiet room. Emily suddenly saw the stars outside the window. No, Damon came in time. He saved me. Emily was relaxed. She was smiling when she spoke. She walked to the window and leaned against the wall to look at the stars and the moon outside. Are you in a good mood? What happened? Eric smiled and relaxed. Can you see the stars and the moon over there? The stars over here are like diamonds. They are bright and colorful. Emily realized what else she wanted to say and quickly bit her lips in fright. She forcefully swallowed back the rest of her words. What does it look like? Eric asked quietly. Like your eyes. Emily wanted to say that, but she was too embarrassed. She could only shake her head. I forgot. Next time I see you, I will take you to a place where you can see the stars. It is very beautiful. Okay. Emily agreed without any hesitation. Is the injury on your face healed? Yes, I can't see any trace of it anymore. Emily touched her face. Let me see. Eric's tone did not allow rejection. Huh? How can I do that? Emily was dumbfounded this time. She was always like this. The moment she was in front of Eric, her brain was a mess, and she couldn't think of anything to do with herself. Take a picture for me. I'm overseas now and I can't see you, but I want to see how your wound is. Eric rarely spoke for a long time, but his voice was very pleasant. When he was trying to cheer people up, his tone was light, like beautiful music. I... Be good, be good. Eric interrupted Emily's rejection. So after hanging up the phone, she took a picture and sent it to Eric. Realizing what she had done, she immediately blushed and laid down on the bed. After a while, Eric sent her a message. You look beautiful. Sleep well. Good night. Emily hid under the covers with a red face and groaned. Her heart felt like it was being scratched by grass again. The numbness kept coming from her spine to her heart. Eric's goodnight call was like a curse, making her body heat up. At the same time, Eric, who was overseas, looked at Emily's picture on his phone. His slender fingers kept touching the screen, and his eyes were full of love. The next day, 
Emily went to women's wear dressed neatly. Shortly after she arrived, Adam came with Drake, Kelsey's husband, and Steve's wife. Liam's eyes were full of concern. When he saw them coming over, a trace of impatience flashed across his face. However, after thinking about it, maybe Adam was coming up with good news. Maybe these people were finally going to admit their fatigue. In an instant, his face was full of smiles again. Hey, why did you guys come in person? Who is taking care of you? At this moment, the people of women's wear had gathered together. After all, this was a big matter. Something this scandalous hadn't happened in a long time, and everyone wanted to know the gossip. Adam's expression didn't change. He had been serious for a long time. Hence, he could not see anything else at this moment. Liam, I am speaking on behalf of everyone now. We are very grateful for the company's arrangement. Liam's smile deepened when he heard that. Ah, uh, this is what we should do. The company never wanted this to happen. Since you're here, now is a good time to sign this agreement. Liam waved his hand happily and signaled his secretary to take out the agreement that he had prepared earlier. As long as these idiots signed it. Liam couldn't help but laugh out loud. Even if he was looking for trouble, he would still place blame on Adam, the person who tried to persuade the workers in the first place. Adam took the agreement and read it carefully. Look carefully, but don't worry. The company will not let you suffer. Liam said with a smile. However, in the next moment, Liam's expression changed. Adam had torn the agreement apart. His voice quickly turned cold. What do you mean by this? Adam sneered. It's what you see. We do not accept it. Why don't you know what to say? Adam looked at Liam as he spoke. What I mean is, we thank the company for their arrangements, but we choose to know the truth. Now, I request to investigate the machines that Steve and Kelsey used that day. Don't look for trouble when you have nothing to find, Liam retorted. Remember what you said before? This is the best arrangement. Let me tell you, Adam, you may think you are playing hero now, but you are harming them. Liam pointed at Adam and cursed. At this moment, the people of women's wear started whispering excitedly. Their voices were not soft, and they entered the ears of Steve's wife and Kelsey's husband. How come these people don't know what's good for them? The company has given them good conditions, and they still want to make trouble? We have not yet settled the strike. Who says it isn't? The human heart has always been greedy since ancient times. What can it be if it turns out like this? It must be because there is not enough money. <laughs> this is affecting our work. Liam is too polite. The next time these people come, we should have someone kick them out. Adam turned around angrily and cursed. Shut up. The people of women's wear were so scared that they shrank back. No one dared to speak anymore. However, Steve's wife could not help but cry. Emily stood at the side and sighed helplessly. These people from women's wear would never know how much harm these cold words would cause to their family members. She secretly remembered the few people who spoke just now. This interaction annoyed Liam. He couldn't believe that Adam actually refused to accept the deal and even wanted to investigate those machines. Why was he asking for trouble? The batch of machines had been destroyed last night. The new machines in the factory had been replaced long ago. The quality of the new machines had passed the test. If they investigated the machines at the factory, these family members would find nothing. At that time, they could easily forget about the compensation. Adam had done more harm than good to these people. The more Liam thought about it, the more pleased he became. He said unhurriedly, What if you can't find anything? Adam pinched his chin. His eyes were fierce. If we can't find anything, we'll follow the normal procedure. We'll do whatever the company says. Aren't you thinking too simply? Since you are going to start investigating, if you can't find anything, the company has the right to think that you are deliberately looking for trouble and revoke all compensation. Adam did not answer directly. Instead, he stared into Liam's eyes. 
What if we do find something? Liam could not help but laugh. How can you find anything when there is nothing to find? We are not afraid of the shadows. It is you who are being greedy. You declined the company's arrangement. Adam, I thought you had already settled down. I did not expect you to still be so stupid. In that case, I'll personally call the police to supervise. And if you find nothing, I want you to take legal responsibility. Adam rubbed his chin. Okay, he said. Go get the police. Liam narrowed his eyes. He panicked when he saw Adam's confident look. But then he thought of the phone call he received last night and felt relieved again. This time, he wanted Adam to pay. All right, if you don't find anything, all of you will go to jail. If you find anything, I'll chop off my head. Liam winked at his secretary and started to call the police. Adam smiled sarcastically. I don't need you to cut your head off. I only want you to bow down and apologize to our injured family members. Liam laughed in disdain. Adam was dreaming. The machines had been destroyed. What could he find? This matter was going down this way because Adam was looking for trouble. People should know that they had taken the initiative to cause trouble and give up their compensation, so there was no need for them to look at the company badly at all. Liam excitedly got someone to call the police. Immediately after, a group of people went to the factory. At this time, the outside of the factory was already full of people. Every one of them was staring at Liam. Steve's wife and Kelsey's husband walked near the back. Emily caught up to them, taking advantage of the fact that no one else was paying attention. She gently patted Steve's wife's shoulder and whispered, Belief in Adam, he will not let you down. Steve's wife wiped her tears and nodded vigorously. Liam strode forward into the factory. Police officers, thank you for coming. These people have already been offered more than fair compensation, but they still insist on these theatrics. I am sorry to bother you with this. Adam followed behind without saying a word. His expression was solemn, but he did not say anything. The more Liam thought about it, the smugger he became. He felt that Adam probably did not expect him to call the police over. He still wanted him to bow down and apologize? Adam, the old bastard, just go to jail. Liam walked to the machines with a swagger. The machines were covered with a white cloth. He could not see anything. He walked quickly to the machines. He lifted the white cloth and said, Look, these are the machines. Our company's machines have all been found to pass the safety inspection. It wasn't a problem with the machines. The police officers did not reply. One of them pointed to a corner and asked, Are you sure it's these machines? I saw that there was blood on the machines inside. Chris, come over and ask the officers to bring the machines here. Also, let's compare the blood with the victim's blood. Blood? What blood? Liam was shocked. He looked in the direction the police were pointing at. The next second, he was shaking. His blood turned cold. How could there be blood? Weren't these machines destroyed? How could they be here? The more Liam thought about it, the more panicked he became. He no longer had the smug look from before. He quickly ran to the police. Those are the wrong machines. It's the other two. Adam appeared in time. Police officer, he said. Our manager must be mistaken. There is blood here. Why is that? Besides, didn't you, Liam, say confidently that it was those other machines? The policeman did not waste his words. We'll know if it's blood or not when we get back. As soon as they finished speaking, they moved the machine away. Liam's face was ashen. If they found out, wouldn't he be finished? But he was the one who brought the police. He had arranged everything. How could he go back on his word now? The more Liam thought about it, the more flustered he became. He glared at him. Damn it! Adam said, Is this what you're doing? I am the one who did this. Liam quickly looked at the policeman and shut his mouth. Adam sneered. So what if it was me? So what if it's not me? 
everyone will know the truth if there is a problem with the machine. Have you fucking forgotten what I told you? Do you not want Cooper's business anymore? Chairman Cooper is still lying in a hospital bed. Liam grabbed Adam's collar and cursed in a low voice. Adam waved him away. Why are you talking about Chairman Cooper? If he opens his eyes, the first thing he will do is to kill you, you bastard. I will say nothing more. I will wait for you to go to the hospital and bow down now and then. Go to prison. At the same time, Steve's wife and Kelsey's husband knelt on the ground and cried. Justice might come later, but as long as they insisted, it would come eventually. The other people in the factory surrounded them and tried to persuade them. Some of them tried to comfort them. Some cried with them. Emily hid in a corner and secretly wiped her eyes. However, this matter did not end here. Rather, this was the real beginning. Standing on the opposite side. Emily saw that Liam had lost his composure and immediately went to make a phone call. If she guessed correctly, he had probably gone to find the backer of Cooper's. James's figure suddenly appeared in Emily's mind. She gritted her teeth and walked out from the corner. She patted Adam's shoulder. Go and comfort them. We need to make the best use of the remaining time. We cannot let those people take the initiative. When Liam returned to women's wear, his clothes were wet with sweat. He could barely control his trembling. The machine in front of him was stained with blood. What was going on? He had heard that the machine had been destroyed last night. Liam took out his phone again, but no one answered this time. What should he do now? Once the police found out that there was something wrong with the machine, they would immediately find out who was responsible. No, he could not just sit there and wait for the punishment. Liam took a deep breath, picked up the ashtray on the table, and smashed it. He tried his best to force himself to calm down. He stood up and snuck out through the back door of women's wear. Liam did not notice that Emily, who had been following him since the beginning, was right behind him. It was obvious that Liam could not have done this alone, given his position. So there must be someone else behind the incident at Cooper's. But who was it? No one knew. What Emily wanted to do was follow Liam's and find the man behind the plot. She could never allow her father's business to have such an inhumane person working there. Emily followed carefully and soon found out. Liam seemed to be in a panic. He was trembling as he walked, wiping his sweat from time to time. It was a stark contrast to his swaggering walk this morning. Soon, Liam got into a taxi. Emily also found a taxi. The two of them drove off to the suburbs, one after the other. When they got out of the taxis, Emily hid in the depths and used a blind spot to stand in a place where she could observe Liam, but he could not see her. About half an hour later, a car slowly drove over to Liam. Emily held her breath as she watched. She narrowed her eyes, wanting to see the car. In the next second, after she saw it clearly, her narrowed eyes instantly widened, and she looked at the car in shock. The person in the car did not get out. Instead, Liam opened the back door and got into the car. The car was covered with a protective screen. She could not see what was happening inside from the outside. However, Emily's body gradually turned cold as time passed. She knew this car. If she remembered correctly, James drove this car to look for her many times. Could it be James? Emily almost subconsciously covered her mouth and squatted on the ground. When she thought of this possibility, her heart felt like it was being stomped on. That kind of pain was not something that could be described with words. James was the symbol of all the good things she had done in the past. Now for James's safety and because of Frank's matters, she had pushed James away. However, now she stood on the opposite side. Especially if James had done such a terrible thing, Emily could not accept it. She forced herself to calm down. 
She stood up and took a picture carefully. Liam talked to the person in the car for about half an hour. Emily kept waiting. When Liam got out of the car, she saw that his expression was much happier than it had been before. Emily's heart skipped a beat. What she feared the most was that their methods were more ruthless than she could imagine. In the current situation, once Liam and the others took the initiative, it would be very difficult for them to turn back. Emily let out a breath and watched Liam leave. Only then did she get into a taxi. On the way back, Emily called Adam. Adam, I'm worried that they will use the machine to do something else. If it's convenient for you, you should go to the police station and check on them. If the report is out, we must get it immediately. Adam quickly agreed. Emily laid on the car seat and rubbed her burning brows. After Adam hung up the phone, he went to the police station. He was very clear about the current situation. To them, the most important thing was the test results of the machine. Once they found out that the accident was caused by the machine, not only would Steve and Kelsey be able to wash away their grievances, they would also receive a lot more compensation. However, at the same time, it was possible that Cooper's, which was on the verge of collapse, had fallen into an irreparable situation. Adam hid in the lounge and smoked a few cigarettes. His brows never relaxed. In his mind, he recalled the time when he first started in this business with Mr. Cooper and the time when he first came to the factory. In the end, the scene in his mind stopped on the face of the baby in Steve's wife's arms. He put out the cigarette. Since he had decided to do what he needed to do, there was no room for hesitation. At the same time, Liam returned to his home. He knew that the man he had just met would not abandon him just like that. Those idiots thought that they could just take the machine, but they did not know that even if they did, so what? They would do everything they could to make this evidence disappear. That night, Emily received a call from Adam. Her expression was not good to begin with. When she heard what Adam said, her expression became even gloomier. Liam did not sleep well. Although the other party had promised that they would get the evidence taken care of, However, he could not calm down. He had made it very clear yesterday that they were basically like grasshoppers tied to a rope. They had privately bought machines that had not been checked. They had lost money from this. If it was exposed, he would be fired, but so would the other person. So he should be fine. Liam took a deep breath and extinguished the cigarette in his hand. He looked at the photos of his wife and son. After this incident, he had sent the two of them to travel abroad. When the storm was over, he would go and get them personally. At 10 in the morning, there was a knock on the door of Liam's house. Who is it? Liam slowly went downstairs. When he saw who was at the door, he almost fell down the stairs. It was the police. Liam Jones, we need to bring you back to assist in the investigation. Before Liam could react, he was pressed to the ground by two policemen who rushed out. His hands were handcuffed. Why are you arresting me? I am innocent. I didn't do anything. Fear overtook Liam's body. His entire body was sinking, sinking into an abyss. However, the police would not listen to him. He was taken away from his home in a sorry state. At the same time, Emily went to see Adam. Last night when she had gotten the call, she was shocked, even when she thought about it. But it was still a shock to hear that they wanted to start with the police. Luckily, Adam felt that something was wrong and contacted someone he knew. That was how he had found the important evidence almost immediately. He did not leave the police station from the beginning to the end and watched the case being investigated closely. There are still people behind this case. I just don't know if Liam will tell the higher-ups. Emily rubbed her forehead anxiously. She was worried that it had something to do with James. But after careful analysis, it was more likely to be Frank, who was behind this matter. But did James know about it? Yes, Liam is nervous. I think the police will scare him. He might have even confessed everything. Adam sighed. They could not do anything more now. Liam was just how Adam thought he would be. 
He was afraid of what would happen and could easily be scared. However, they did not expect that it was not the police who came to scare him first, but someone else. During the interrogation, Liam naturally gritted his teeth and did not admit anything. In the end, he said not a single word. Shortly after, a women's wear lawyer arrived at the police station. Liam suddenly felt that he had come back to life. That man had not given up on him. Once they were alone, the lawyer showed Liam a picture of his wife and son traveling. Why are you showing me this? Liam was shocked. The man smiled. Relax. You know what these pictures mean. If you admit it, our entire team of lawyers will fight this lawsuit for you. Your wife and son will get a huge sum of money. If you don't admit it, there may be a problem. I heard that your wife and son are playing on the island, and I also heard that accidents are very common on the beach. You guys! Liam's face was pale, but he could not say a word. His scalp was numb, and he felt as if he had just been put into a pot of oil. He even forgot to breathe. If he was not taking such a direct threat seriously, he would be a fool. He did not want to admit that he was just a person who had taken the money. The person who was responsible for this was someone else. But his wife and son? Liam held his head with both hands and cried out. An hour later, Liam pled guilty in the police station. He had used his power to privately bring in a batch of machines that had not been checked and had used up all his money. That was why this incident had happened. At the same time, both women's wear and Cooper's were on the news. No one knew who had exposed this matter. The reporters went to interview the victims, one after another, and reported the entire incident from beginning to end. As expected, the story was covered not only in New York City, but also all around the country. It can't be. How could women's wear be like this? Damn, I'm going to throw away all their clothes now. With such a leader, I reckon the rest of the people aren't good people either. The factory people have lost their hands and feet for the sake of money. Whether it's women's wear or Cooper's, they have to be responsible for this matter. After the news was released, not only did they curse women's wear and Cooper's, but they also directly saw the share price of Cooper's fall again and again. The public relations team of Cooper's immediately apologized to the officials about this matter, but it was still difficult to appease the public. After discussing it, they had decided that Adrian would personally hold an official apology press conference tomorrow afternoon. Because of all that was going on, Adrian had been busy at the company for the whole day. He finally returned home in the early hours of the morning. Emily did not sleep. Although Liam had admitted everything and the news report had come out, she was still worried that something else would happen. Hence, she hid upstairs and watched Adrian return home. Her face was covered with a layer of haze. Adrian seemed to be angry. He picked up the vase on the table and threw it on the floor. Then he picked up his phone and dialed. How many times have I told you? There are many ways to earn money. Don't gamble with Coopers. Do you fucking has no ears? Now that you've caused all this trouble, I'll have to clean it up for you. Who do you think you are? The person on the other side of the phone said something. Adrian's anger rose again. Stop talking to me. What I want are results. What is the result you gave me? Do you have any idea what Coopers is like now? Emily heard the angry roar and saw the obvious killing intent in Adrian's eyes. Even if it was not directed at her, she could not help but shiver. However, the person on the other side of the phone said something. This time, Adrian did not get angry. Instead, he looked upstairs with a deeper meaning. Seeing this, Emily's heart almost stopped beating. She quickly hid from him. Subconsciously, she thought that Adrian had seen her. But Adrian quickly turned his gaze back to the living room. Don't talk to me about anything else. Even if Adam can't do it alone, so what? He is a loser, but he has been with old man Cooper for so long. I want results. I want a way to deal with it. Emily's heart suddenly tightened. If she did not guess wrong, the person on the phone might be Frank. 
What was he saying to Adrian? It should be said that Adam was a reckless man. He could not do this to such an extent on his own. There must be someone else behind this. At this time, the other party did not seem to have given a clear reply. Adrian cursed and threw the phone to the ground. Emily jumped in fright and did not hesitate anymore. She quickly walked back to her room at a soft and slow pace. The next day, Adrian attended the official apology press conference in the afternoon. The media had arranged everything beforehand, and the questions were not too difficult. However, there was someone who was not afraid and came up and asked, According to our investigation, Cooper's was led by the old chairman, Mr. Cooper. It has always been one of the top industries in New York City. After that, Cooper's was handed over to you. Do you have anything to say? Are you still going to continue being the person in charge? Why don't you consider handing it over to Miss Cooper? Adrian took a deep look in that person's direction. His anger was about to surge. But seeing so many flashlights and media outlets, his rationality quickly returned. Adrian displayed a standard business smile and said, About that, the chairman is still in the hospital. If he wakes up, I will naturally return Coopers to him immediately. As for Emily, he did not answer that part of the question at all. Although Coopers was in his hands now, regardless of whether it was Chloe, the company's board members, or the media, they all felt that he took over for no reason. On what basis? Could it be that he had not been conscientious in Coopers these past six years? Adrian's eyes gradually turned gloomy. He quickly ended the apology meeting, but the anger in his chest did not fully erupt. However, reality did not give him the chance to get angry. Cooper soon faced their strongest blow. Not only did the share prices keep falling, but even the projects that they had been discussing earlier had come to a screeching halt, including the big projects that Adrian had been working on for two months. This was a fatal blow to Cooper's, which was on the verge of collapse. That was the sky. On the other side of town, the atmosphere was gloomy. In the ward of the hospital, Steve and the injured people were very happy when they heard that Liam had been captured. I have already discussed it with them. Steve, don't go to the front line. Stay behind to provide technical support. As for Kelsey, I've also arranged other tasks. The other two can still enter the front line. When the time comes, it will depend on their choice. Adam rubbed his head. Although they had not found the person behind the scenes, they had solved the problem perfectly. Steve's wife and Kelsey had both received compensation. It had also been proven that the accident was not their fault. Steve's wife came forward with the child in her arms. She thanked Adam repeatedly with tears in her eyes. Adam smiled. You don't need to thank me. Steve has been with me since he was a young man in his 20s. Thank you for your hard work. We still have a long life ahead of us. For the sake of our children, we will stick together. Okay. Steve's wife wiped her tears. The baby in her arms blinked and suddenly smiled, as if telling everyone that the future would be good. Emily sat in the office of women's wear and observed the share prices of Cooper's. According to her thoughts, she wanted to hide it from the media. If she could keep it a secret she would keep it a secret. However, she never thought that the competition company of Cooper's would be the first to reveal it. As a result, Cooper suffered a fatal blow. Now, if they couldn't pull out any projects, Cooper's would always be short of funds. If this continued, it wouldn't be a loss of energy very soon. In fact, Emily tightly knitted her brows. She did not regret making this choice but she suddenly felt that she could not face the results she had created. Her father was still in the hospital. Could it be that Cooper's was going to... Adrian was very busy at Cooper's. What? They canceled it as well? What did they say? We can't lose the Pope family's project no matter what. The higher-ups of Cooper's in the lower middle ranks didn't dare to say a word. Adrian had always been gentle and polite in Cooper's. 
However, in the current situation, everyone was so scared that they didn't dare to breathe loudly. It wasn't without reason that people were pushing others against the wall. None of the companies that were on good terms with Coopers could make a sound at this moment. They even canceled their partnerships one after another. After all, Cooper was going through a big scandal this time. The current companies not only had to pay attention to the economy, but they also had to maintain their image. At this moment, anyone who had any relationship with Cooper would be blacklisted. This time, even Chloe started to worry. No matter what, the current Coopers was still her and Adrian's backing. If they fell, it would not be a good thing for either of them. Just when everyone thought that Cooper was about to fall into a desperate situation, someone from the project team ran into the room and exclaimed, Adrian, Chloe, just now, the law offices of Bolton and Brown sent a message saying that they want to work with us on the latest quarterly project. It's a $10 million project. What did you say? Adrian suddenly stood up and ran over, trembling. Did you hear it right? Are the law offices of Bolton and Brown wanting to cooperate with us? That was the law offices of Bolton and Brown. It's a company that Coopers usually doesn't even dare to think about. Would they choose to work with them at this time? Yes, the law offices of Bolton and Brown. Adrian, we may actually survive this. The entire company seemed to have come to life after hearing the good news. They applauded and cheered. Chloe forcefully pulled herself back from the huge surprise. The law offices of Bolton and Brown belong to the Parker family. Doesn't that mean that Eric is involved in this matter? Was Eric here to help her? Chloe could not help but laugh. It seemed that Eric still could not let her go. To her, this was simply great news. The company's people were not fools. They knew what kind of relationship she had with Eric. At this moment, everyone knew that she was the one who could save the Cooper family business. After Adrian heard the happy news, he looked in Chloe's direction, but he quickly retracted his gaze. The current situation was critical, and he could not think too much about it. He had to find a way to get rid of Chloe as soon as the crisis was over. If not, there would be endless troubles in the future. Emily heard this news that night. When she returned to her house, she saw the mother and daughter duo sitting in the living room. Chloe raised her eyebrows proudly and said slowly, Cooper's business is in danger now. Eric must be afraid that I will be sad, so he made this arrangement. Moreover, he arranged for the law offices of Bolton and Brown to step in. Lorraine, who was at the side, could not hide her smile. That's why my daughter is the best. That Eric likes you. Maybe mom will be able to drink your wedding wine soon. Mom! Chloe pursed her lips and snickered, but her eyes glanced at Emily. Her words were meant for Emily to hear. Sure enough, in the next moment, she saw Emily's expression change. Before they could even speak, she immediately left the house. What's wrong with her? Lorraine looked at Chloe in surprise. What else can she do? She's jealous. A woman's jealousy is very scary. Chloe sneered in disdain. Emily did not know what was being said inside. After knowing that Eric had helped Cooper, her mind went blank. When she regained her senses, she had already left the house and stood at the entrance of the Parker family home. She didn't know what she was doing, but she wanted to see Eric at this moment. She even forgot if Eric was still abroad or not. Emily took out her phone. Just as she was about to make a call, a car light suddenly flashed not far away. She subconsciously raised her hand to cover her face, but then the car stopped. She saw the door open and Eric's figure suddenly appeared. It was already late autumn and Eric was wearing a suit. The black did not melt him into the night. Instead, it made his white reflective face even more dazzling. His eyes, which were as black as ink, sparkled under the light of the street lamps. Emily's heart skipped a beat. Before she could react, her body had already obeyed her heart, and she quickly ran towards Eric. She just wanted to hug him. 
Eric looked at Emily running towards him in surprise. The woman's body was very thin. She was facing the wind. Her short hair was fluttering in the wind. On her fair face, her firm gaze was reflected straight into Eric's heart. He opened his arms and hugged Emily. The woman's initiative and the fragrance of her body filled him with happiness. He tightened his arms and hugged Emily even tighter. With a cool breeze blowing over, Emily finally realized what she had done. It was late at night, and she had come to the Parker family house without caring about anything. She even ran into Eric's arms. But this embrace was very warm. Emily felt like a greedy child who could not bear to leave it. She said in a low voice, Am I stupid? No. Eric gently stroked her hair and put one hand on her waist. You helped Coopers, right? Emily's voice was still very low. Yes, I did that. If there's anything you need help with, just ask. If anything happens, I'll solve it for you. Eric opened his mouth again. He lowered his voice, but it sounded like he did it on purpose. He lowered his head and covered Emily's earlobe, breathing warm air into her ears. Emily's body trembled, and a wave of warmth flowed through her heart. She raised her head and looked at Eric's deep facial features, especially those charming eyes. She could not help but stand on her tiptoes. They were getting closer and closer. They almost touched the tips of their noses together. However, at this moment, a tender voice suddenly came from behind. Miss Emily, you're here! John's voice rang out, followed by his small body. Emily was shocked. She turned around and hugged the little guy, who was rushing over with both hands. Little darling, don't you need warmer clothes? Emily smiled and rubbed John's head. I'm not cold. Emily, why aren't you looking for me? Have you forgotten about me? Dad has been overseas for a few days and I couldn't contact you. I miss you so much. John curled his lips pitifully. His bright eyes seemed to be saying that he felt wronged. Emily held his face. How could I forget about you? I've just been very busy recently. I'm sorry, my little darling. I don't blame you. She kissed him on the forehead and John immediately beamed with joy. He hugged Emily. Eric watched his son. He narrowed his eyes and looked at his son who only knew how to cause trouble and fight for a favor. Eric frowned in dissatisfaction. Why aren't you sleeping yet? His voice made Emily, who had been relaxed, tense up again. John crossed his arms over his chest and raised his chin. Are you the only one allowed to see Emily? Dad, you are jealous. She likes me the most. Eric glanced at him. The father and son pair looked at each other. Emily was helpless. She hugged John and said, It's getting late. Do you have to go to school tomorrow? Why don't you go in and sleep now? I will take you out for dinner this weekend. No, I'll personally cook for you. Really? John's eyes lit up. Of course. Emily smiled. John took Emily's hand and hooked his pinky around hers. Pinky promise? Emily laughed. Okay. John kissed Emily's face. He quickly looked at his father and kissed her again. He stuck his tongue out at his father and ran away. He didn't forget to turn back and say, Good night! Emily waved at him helplessly. Good night! Once the little fellow left, only she and Eric were left. Emily could not help but feel awkward. She must be going crazy. She wanted to take the initiative to kiss Eric. Was she indeed crazy? Emily shook her head. She really shouldn't stay here any longer. She did not even dare to look at Eric. She lowered her head and said, I am, I'll leave. Just as she was about to leave, Eric suddenly grabbed her hand. Eric did not give her any time to react. He pulled her into his arms and welcomed her with his hot kiss. Emily subconsciously wanted to push him away but she was held tightly by Eric. He was so strong that she could not even find a way to resist. The sudden contact of lips and teeth made Emily's body stiffen. 
that Eric seemed to have used all his patience. His kiss was very light and gentle. He slowly pried open her teeth and swept through every corner of her mouth. Emily felt that her body was becoming softer and softer. Her legs seemed to have lost all their strength, and she was even about to lose her balance. Only when he was about to lose his breath did Eric let go of her. It was only before pulling away from that that he bit the corner of her lips. It scared her so much that her body trembled. You... Eric's eyes were covered with a layer of mist and filled with an intense desire to possess. Emily's heart trembled when she saw this gaze. She hurriedly pushed him away. She did not care about everything else and quickly ran in the opposite direction. It's late. I should go home. Eric stared at Emily, speechless. He raised his hand and pursed his lips. Emily's kiss was so sweet. Just now, he almost used all of his strength to control himself. His possessiveness was stronger than he had imagined. He was afraid that he would scare her away. Emily sat in the car, but her heart still did not calm down. Thump, 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 thump. The loud sound made her think that if she opened her mouth, her heart would immediately jump out. Eric's kiss... It seemed gentle, but it was overbearing. He did not give her any chance to escape. She touched her lips unconsciously. The temperature just now seemed to have dropped. There was also the sound of Eric panting beside the ear that kept running through her mind. His kiss made her body feel like it was on fire. Her face was red, and she closed her eyes tightly. She had to stop thinking about it. At the hospital... Liam had officially been arrested, but Adam still managed to get in touch with him. He asked the police to bring Liam to the hospital. What do you want me to do here? Liam roared in a low voice. He had been in prison for the past few days and had lost a lot of weight. His face was growing a full beard. The ward was full of people. These people were none other than the people who had been injured in this incident. They all stared at him as if they were going to swallow him whole. Liam jumped in fright and moved closer to the police. Adam gave him a deep look and pursed his lips. Did you know, to you, one finger, one arm, and one leg are nothing. But to them, this is all they have. When they are tired, they do not dare to rest. When they are sick, they do not dare to take leave because they will lose wages because they are still children at home waiting to be raised. What about you? For your selfish desires, you disregarded their lives. You almost destroyed all of their hopes. Liam still wanted to argue, but under the gaze of Adam's eyes, he did not dare to speak. He could only shrink back like a turtle. Adam smiled disdainfully. I have something else to say to you. Do you still remember what you said to me? If it was found that the machine had problems, you would kneel on the floor. Come on, Adam. Don't tell me you don't know what to do. You are going too far. Liam's face was pale. Although he had said that. What's going on? Adam's eyes turned cold. Don't worry. I'm not as shameless as you. You don't need to kneel in front of me. But in this room, you must kneel and admit your mistakes to me. I... Liam shook his head desperately, but the police's indifference and everyone's glares made him unable to resist. So he could only clench his teeth and kneel on the ground. I'm sorry! Adam walked to his side and looked down at him. You have been humbled, but I also want to tell you that we will never accept your apology. Just know this... Because of what you have done, no matter how many years you will be in prison, you will not be able to make up for it. As long as you live, you will bear the burden of their hatred towards you. His every word was like a knife, stabbing fiercely at Liam's heart. Liam could not take it anymore. He was kneeling on the ground and crying. However, no one pitied him. They did not even bother to give him a look. This matter had come to an end. The headquarters of Cooper's was busy working with the law offices of Bolton and Brown. On the women's wear side, 
Adam had resumed his position and was busy with the foreign trade list of the Smith family. Because of the factory event, everyone had been delayed for quite some time. As a result, now every department is extremely busy. The next problem they would have to deal with was Liam. He had already gone to jail. Who would the new manager be? The employees at Women's Wear kept guessing. Some people guessed that one of them would be promoted from the inside. Karen had a very high possibility of rising from the inner circle. Some people said that a person would come from the headquarters of Cooper's. There were many opinions. No one told what the arrangement would be. All they could do was wait in silence. Karen was standing alone in the break room when Emily came in and smiled at her. Emily. Karen greeted her with a smile in return. Emily was only a commissioner in the company, but because of the other party's identity, even if she was not convinced, she did not dare to call her by her name, much less call her Emily intimately. What are you doing here? I heard that it's likely that you will become the general manager of women's wear. If it is true, I congratulate you in advance. To Emily, anyone could become the general manager. After all, no matter who it was, Adrian would try his best to get the other party to supervise. Emily, please don't laugh. Karen waved her hand and sighed. We never thought much about Liam. Besides, I don't have enough qualifications. If I had to choose, I would say that the job is most suitable for you. Emily did not say anything and just looked at her. I am not being polite. Karen quickly explained. Emily shook her head. Regardless of whether you are being polite or not, don't say these things in the future. If Adrian heard this, he might not be happy. Whether she was in women's wear or at home, she couldn't be too conspicuous. If Adrian hadn't been so busy recently, she would have done a lot of things that were out of line. Adrian might even investigate Liam's matter. Emily took a deep breath. She really could not relax at all. Just as the factory matter was over, she received a call from Mr. Young. Emily, do you have time now? Let's meet alone. Mr. Young sounded exhausted. Emily looked at the time. It was still early to leave work, but she had nothing to do today, so she agreed. An hour later, in a cafe in the suburbs. What? You can't find the video. How could this be? Emily was shocked and couldn't help but raise her voice. I don't know what is going on either. Mr. Young wiped his face. Ever since he talked to Emily, he had sent people to investigate what had happened. The first thing he was sure of was the video. But unexpectedly, regardless of whether it was the bar or the police station, the video had disappeared. It can't have disappeared for no reason, especially at the police station. There should be backup copies. Emily took a sip of coffee. Her expression was focused. She narrowed her eyes. If this was not an accident, then someone must have arranged it on purpose. She mentioned this matter to Mr. Young and started to investigate it herself. It must have been someone who destroyed the video after the case was over. However, this also indirectly proved that there must be something incriminating shown on video. Otherwise, why would someone destroy it? Even the video that was in the hands of the police was gone. Mr. Young sighed. What should we do now? We can't prove anything without the video. Those photos will only prove my guilt. Emily also frowned. She never thought that such a situation would occur. Don't worry. Emily comforted her in a low voice. It is understandable if you can't find the barred footage. After all, they wouldn't keep it for so many years. As for the police station, if they can't find it, we will. But don't forget, other than these two places, there are still more options. Where? Mr. Young instantly became excited. The media back then. They must have gotten the video first. That's why they made such a big fuss. Moreover, media outlets usually have information rooms that contain information from years back. Find a family to investigate. If we're lucky, we might bump into them. Emily took a deep breath. But be careful. You must be careful. Don't make too much noise about it. Mr. Young gritted his teeth. If you want to look into the media, you can't keep quiet. Emily was silent. 
Now she could confirm that it was Chloe who was involved back then. It was just that Chloe could not have done it alone. It was certain who was cooperating with her. With the influence of the media that even the young family could not suppress back then, the person Chloe found was very likely also in the media industry. Perhaps he was a senior person. Then, if they made a public announcement, it was very likely that they would just alert the enemy. How about this? Emily's brows were tightly knitted. You first find out who was the first to release this news and who was the one who further expanded on this news. Avoid the two families and keep a low profile to investigate. Don't use your name and find any random excuse to talk about the past. Mr. Young nodded. I understand. After a while, he let out a long sigh. He had suffered so much in this matter. His family, whom he had always valued, was about to collapse because of it. Therefore, once he had started working on this, it was very difficult for him not to lose his mind over it. However, he was still that famous figure, Mr. Young, who had started from nothing. He stared at Emily, his sharp eyes seeming to see through people. I never asked you before, but it is very strange. Some people do not seem to suspect that it was you who was killed back then. Mr. Young took out his cigarette habitually and examined it with a very oppressive gaze. Emily was not afraid. Instead, she looked at him and said, Just like you, if I had not gotten the video, I would not completely trust you. And if I do not show the evidence, you would not believe me. So it is useless for me to say anything now. She had long passed the time when she cried and shouted that she was innocent. Because she knew better than anyone else that it was useless. Mr. Young looked away in surprise. The corner of his mouth curled up. You are more interesting than before. We old people have always said that your father spoiled you so much that you don't act like him. But now you are still very similar to him. Thank you. When mentioning her father... Emily's expression also eased up. The two of them chatted for a while. When they said goodbye, Mr. Young said softly, Sheila and I have been drifting further and further apart over the years. I had no right to say anything to her before. Since you are back, help me persuade her not to go to places like bars. Okay. Emily nodded heavily. On the way home, Emily called Henry and asked if he could find out about the video. The other party said that if he could find anything, he would reply as soon as possible. After hanging up the phone, Emily leaned against the car and exhaled deeply. After the factory matter was settled, what was in front of her was women's wear's foreign trade list and the young family matter. In fact, who was the new manager of women's wear? If she thought about it carefully, it had a lot to do with her. If the other party was a smart person, unlike Liam, who would completely lose himself after wearing a tall hat, it would be bad news for Emily. Because it was hard for her to guarantee that when she decided or dealt with matters, she would do it flawlessly. At this moment, she hoped that it was Karen. That would naturally be the best. Emily returned home and opened her phone. She saw the photo messages sent by John. There are many camera functions nowadays they could make their expression package. She did not know if it was to make her happy or not, but the few messages sent by John were especially funny. In one of them, he ran over and kissed her. It was accompanied by a pink heart. John's eyes were slightly narrowed in the photo. His thick eyelashes cast a shadow. Emily looked at his expression countless times and quickly preserved it. She often thought at least she wanted to understand everything. Even if things didn't go smoothly, at least she did what she wanted to do, step by step. As for that child, Emily's heart fiercely tugged. She had dreamed countless times that when a child was just born, it was a small ball. After experiencing unimaginable pain, she gave birth to a child that she thought was the hope of life. But not long after, she learned that the child was already dead. However, the heavens were still good to her. They had allowed her to meet little John. Perhaps it was a coincidence. Or perhaps it was fate. The little guy liked her the moment he saw her, and she could not help but like the little guy. Every time she thought of John, Emily felt that she had been given a gift. 
She looked at the picture of the little guy a few times before falling asleep peacefully. The next day, for the first time, Emily felt that fate was on her side. The people of Cooper's suddenly came to announce that the position of manager of women's wear was going to be temporarily taken over by Karen. This was undoubtedly great news for Emily. Women's wear had already started to stir up trouble. After all, Karen was someone everyone was familiar with, and she had always been very popular. Promotion from the inside was always better than a drop in the air from Cooper's. It was much better than getting demoted. Karen, it's time to celebrate. Who is Karen? Call me the manager. I've already said it. Let's get that damn expensive daily ingredient downstairs. Manager Karen, we want to eat daily food. Karen was surrounded by everyone. After the initial panic subsided, she was still someone who had accepted many big projects. She quickly calmed down and said with a smile, Good, good, good. Don't leave after work. Let's go out and eat. The crowd cheered again. At such a lively time, Emily stood quietly by the side. Emily, are you going tonight? After Brittany finished messing around, she ran to Emily's side. Me? Emily was a little hesitant. Whether she went or not was a question. Let's see if we have time later. However, Karen did not give her a chance to find a reason not to attend. She came to invite her personally. Emily, you must come tonight. Emily smiled. Congratulations on your promotion to manager. It seems that my early congratulations were right. The two of them looked at each other and smiled. To be honest, Emily was still somewhat glad in her heart. In the beginning, no one gave her a friendly face, even Liam. Karen was the first person to take the initiative to speak up for her and stand by her side. Now that Karen had become the manager, the rock in her heart had fallen to the ground. What she needed to focus on now was the Smith family project. A while ago, there was an accident at the factory. Although it was quickly arranged after the strike, the Smith family had allowed an extension on their contract. The entire event still delayed a lot of progress. Now, all the workers were working overtime every day to catch up with this batch of goods. It would take about half a month to complete. Emily's heart was still filled with worry when she thought about it. She kept feeling that apart from the factory matter, everything else was going too smoothly. She was still expecting something bad to happen. She did not know when it would start, but it surely would not make her happy. Who knew that in the afternoon, the woman who made her uneasy would personally make a trip to women's wear? Jessica's arrival was very sensational. She had ordered a small cake and coffee for every employee of women's wear. Wow, Manager Smith, you are too good. You ordered a cake for us? Manager Smith is considerate. We've been busy all afternoon, so we need some sweets. And it's from the world-famous bakery. You are considerate. The people of women's wear were getting more and more excited. Although Jessica was smiling on the surface, she felt that these people in front of her did not have much knowledge. A little thing could bribe them. Oh, please stop it. No need for all that flattery. It has not been easy for you guys recently. I really can't help much. I can only buy some small things to reward you guys for your hard work. Please don't say that. If you didn't buy time for the current batch of orders, then we may have had a headache. Karen quickly said, Currently the Smith family was their biggest customer, so his attitude was very cautious. Jessica was very satisfied with this compliment. She ruffled her hair and pretended to be casual as she asked, Where's Emily? I wanted to see her. Five minutes later, Jessica came to Emily's office. What arrangement? Emily, what did I bring you? Jessica's voice came out before she entered the office. Emily's scalp tightened. She closed the documents in her hands and stood up. This piece is especially left for you. Jessica placed the cake on the desk. Emily silently took a breath in her heart and revealed a polite smile. Thank you. Jessica sighed and intimately held Emily's hand. Don't blame me for coming so late. 
Recently, there have been many things that I cannot find the time to do. But I have long seen that Liam of yours is not a good person. I just didn't expect him to be so heartless. Emily put on a pained expression. No one expected him to be like this. After saying that, she changed the topic. Speaking of which, I still have to thank you. This time, it's all thanks to you for buying us time. Of course not. There's no need to be so polite. Moreover, I only want you to do this project. I have confidence in you. Jessica hid her pride carefully. It was all nonsense. She just needed to buy time. If she could not get time, how could she let Emily continue to be in charge of this project? And if she wasn't in charge, how could she set her up to destroy her reputation? But the funniest thing was that this idiot thanked her without knowing anything. Jessica was about to burst out laughing. Emily made a moved expression. Thank you, Jessica. Previously, someone said that the people who help you when you're in trouble are friends. Jessica, if you don't mind, I consider you to be a friend now. Jessica rolled her eyes in her heart, but still followed Chloe's arrangement on the surface. She held Emily's hand and acted as if she would love to be friends with her. The two of them did not have the time to chat. Jessica came over to broaden Emily's heart and take a look at how much work had been completed in the factory. After that, she quickly left. After she left, Emily's expression immediately turned cold. Based on her intuition, Jessica was not sincere. Something must be wrong. Emily pinched the space between her brows and went through this project from the beginning to the end in her mind. She still could not figure out which segment had a problem. On her side, Jessica thought that she had completely captured Emily's and called Chloe in high spirits. Chloe, <laughs> just like you said, that slight believed it. I see that you don't need to doubt it either. She is an idiot. She deserves to be set up by us. Don't worry, I have prepared everything perfectly. She will not discover it. Jessica hung up the phone and could not help but laugh. She could almost imagine Emily's shock and panic when she found out the truth half a month later. At that time, she would capture her expressions properly in her mind. For the next few days, women's wear was unusually calm. Everyone went about their own business. Emily took the time to go to the factory to supervise the completion of the goods. She also visited Adam and the people who were injured. Steve and Kelsey were still in the hospital, but they were cleared to leave and were just waiting to be discharged officially. The other people had already started their work again. Adam had specially arranged other working hours for them. They only worked five hours a day. Drake accompanied Emily along the way. Emily, he said. If you look at quality, I promise you, our factory's people care about quality. If we do not do well, we will be punished by Adam. How will you be punished? Emily smiled and asked in a low voice. Drake was about to say something, but he was caught off guard when he saw Emily smile. He was stunned and could not say anything for a long time. Huh? Emily stopped when she saw that he was not leaving. Drake recovered from his daze and scratched his head with a red face. Emily, who had just laughed, was too beautiful. Among the people he had seen since he was young, even the big stars who were famous on TV, none were as beautiful as Emily. I, you, ugh. Drake hit his hand to demonstrate. Emily still smiled. This was Adam's style. In the factory's office, Emily met Adam. After the incident at the factory, Adam's impression of Emily had changed greatly. He no longer had the hostility from before. Instead, he looked like a leader. I was going to look for you. Come, sit and have a sip of tea. Adam waved his hand to let Drake know to leave. He poured himself a cup of tea and crossed the office door. Is there anything I can help you with? Emily drank some water and straightened her body. She realized Adam had something to say to her. Adam rubbed his chin and walked around the office a few times. He was hesitating on how to explain. Just say it if you have something to say. As long as you don't chase me out like the last few times, I can accept it. Emily said with a smile. You child. Adam also smiled. But soon he stopped smiling. He sighed and said, Actually, I just wanted to ask you what you plan to do in the future. 
Your father is currently lying in the hospital. I won't hide it from you. Even if Cooper's is in someone else's hands, we old folks who followed your dad from the start are still on his side. But we can't even see your father. It's not just you. Even I have to make an appointment to see my dad in advance. Emily suddenly tightened her grip on the teacup. The smile in her eyes disappeared in an instant. A chill quickly rose. What the hell is going on? Adrian, this bastard has gone too far. Tell me, when do you want to take your family's business back? We old men will follow you. I believe we can beat him. Adam roared in anger. Emily was calm. She shook her head. Now is not the time. Why? Don't be afraid. If it wasn't for your father, we wouldn't feel this way. I'm willing to risk my life for this matter of yours. Adam's face was red with excitement. It was as if Emily nodded and agreed. He would immediately rush Adrian with a big knife. Don't get too excited. Emily felt warm in her heart. After Frank's incident, she had some doubts about these people who used to follow her father. However, she can now feel Adam's true feelings and knew that he was really worried about her. Tell me, what arrangements do you have for me? I'll cooperate with you. Adam sighed. I also thought about killing Adrian with a single slash after I came out. I won't hide that from you. I almost did it. But what's the use? Kill him and I have to go back to that filthy place? This is not what my father wants. Emily smiled bitterly and continued. Even now there are remnants of my father and Cooper's. You should know better than me that Adrian has weakened many of their forces over the years. He will keep an eye on their movements. As for us, we are in a passive position. Once Adrian discovers us, the consequences will be grim. Adam was silent. He had to admit that Emily was right. However, he was still unwilling to give up. So, you have been wasting your time in women's wear all this time? Emily shook her head. My position at women's wear was only arranged for me by him. It is convenient for him to supervise me and also to make sure I stay away from Cooper's main business. If I rashly suggested returning to Cooper's, it would arouse suspicion. Adam cursed in a low voice. The current situation at hand was not ideal for Adam or Emily. Don't worry. Emily smiled calmly. Back then, he was able to put me in jail and take over Cooper's. It can be seen how ruthless he is, so we can't do anything rashly. We could only plan step by step. Sooner or later, time won't be a problem. I know I can last longer than him. I want to see him fall from the peak. Isn't that way more interesting? Adam sighed. He could not imagine how many things Emily had gone through to make her like this. He walked over and patted Emily's shoulder. Child, don't take responsibility for anything in the future. Recently, I have been discussing this with them. I want to see how I can arrange for you to be sent to Cooper's. Emily's eyes were slightly red. Okay, thank you. Why are you thanking me? Adam shook his head. I still need to thank you. After Emily came out of the factory, she did not leave immediately. Instead, she squatted in a corner and rubbed her eyes. Adam's words just now had moved her and made her feel relaxed. When it came to taking back Cooper's, she felt that she was alone and helpless at the beginning. She had committed her own mistakes, and she had taken responsibility for them. However, on this road, she still met many people. Some obstructed her, but they helped her even more. This made her feel that she was not alone. Emily wiped her tears and returned to women's wear. What Adam said made sense. Right now, all of her focus was on women's wear, but she was still far away from her goal. She still needed to find the right time to return to her rightful place in her father's business. Only in the core area would she have more opportunities to take the business back. After a few days of peace, it was finally Friday. At three in the afternoon, Emily received a call from Eric. I'm downstairs. Eric's voice was as low and hoarse as usual. Emily hung up the phone, picked up her coat, and hurried out. It was okay to get off work early once or twice, right? Emily quickly got into Eric's car while no one was paying attention. 
When did she get so familiar with seeing Eric in secret? Why are you free today? Emily asked softly. Eric looked at her with a smile. Have you forgotten? Hmm? What have I forgotten? Emily was at a loss. She did not know what Eric was talking about. She was rarely at a loss. After all, in women's wear and the Cooper business, she wanted to put all her energy into facing all kinds of things. She wanted to show all kinds of different expressions, but she did not mean it from the bottom of her heart. It seemed like only when she was by Eric's side would she put down all her disguises and reveal her true self. Eric looked at her. Emily was wearing a white shirt today. She was dressed like a professional woman, but she had such a cute expression on her face. He thought he had great self-control, but he still could not hold it in and raised his head. He rubbed Emily's hair. Last time you promised John that you would personally cook for him. The little guy thought about it for a few days and didn't eat anymore. He said he wanted to keep his stomach to eat what you cooked. Ah, ah. Emily suddenly reacted. There was indeed such a thing. At that time, to coax the little fellow to go back to sleep, she said that she would personally cook for him. Emily suddenly thought of Eric's overbearing and gentle kiss that night. When those images flashed through her mind, her lips seemed to still have the heat of the past, burning her heart all of a sudden. Emily quickly shook her head, shaking those scenes of blushing and beating hearts out. Eric thought that she did not know how to cook and had forgotten, which was why he was so nervous. So he said, Wait a moment. I will take you guys to the Italian cafe to eat. No! Emily decisively shook her head. I promised John that I would do it. And isn't it just cooking? I was too nervous last time. I can do it this time. When she said this, Emily herself did not have much confidence. Eric smiled. Okay. As long as you don't get hurt, you can try anything. Emily felt warm in her heart. She looked up at Eric. Is that how you talk to everyone? Eric drove slowly to the front of a school. John had not finished school yet. After parking the car, Eric led Emily to the school gate. Is John going to school here? Emily was very surprised. This was a public school in New York City. She had thought that Eric would arrange a private school for John. This was her expectation. Yeah, he is more at ease here. Children don't need to worry about their identities. It's good that he is happy. Eric said in a low voice. Emily's heart began to ripple again. They stood outside the school for about 10 minutes when the school gate suddenly opened and a group of chattering children rushed out. Probably because it was Friday today. Every child's face was brimming with the brightest smiles. Emily stood on her tiptoes and looked for John in the crowd. But there were too many people. Not only children, but also parents. Emily herself did not stand still. She was pushed by the person in front of her and fell into Eric's arms. She was caught off guard. Eric wrapped his arms around her and said softly, Be careful. John knows I'm here. He will come by himself. Okay. They were too close to each other. She was almost in Eric's arms. Emily blushed. She wanted to get up but was held tightly by Eric's strong arms. This man. This man was doing this on purpose.